Hey, Jay here with Dirt Bike TV. For those of you who aren't familiar with us, we mainly do dirt bike and ATV stuff. But today we're talking about something a little different for us, and that's a Honda Ridgeline, a new 19. Uh, this is actually for my wife, and uh, we were kicking around between a Tacoma, and this is what she chose, uh, is this truck. Now, some people might not want to call it a truck. Uh, we do, and some people call it a car. So we're gonna give you a quick look at this thing and talk about why we chose this vehicle over at Tacoma. Okay, so as you can see, uh, the Ridgeline does have a bed. Now it is a short bed. Um, it's actually a tiny bit shorter than the Tacoma short bed. Um, you can't hardly get a dirt bike in there sideways. Um, it's just a little bit shorter and won't allow it to get in there, mainly because of the lip up front. But you can get a bike. They have that long bed extender, which is really cool. Um, we've actually put a bike in with a tailgate up and set the bike on the tailgate, tied down, and it's actually worked well. I've had two bikes in here, and it works well. Now, this is not, this vehicle for me, and for, for us, again, it's for my wife mainly. She wants something that's comfortable to drive. It still has all-wheel drive. This is the RTL version, so it's all-wheel drive. That's what we wanted, something that was good for her to drive around and safe and feel good. This isn't my main vehicle for dirt bikes. I have a work van, and, um, that gives you, you know, something to mainly use. This is just going to be every occasionally having a bike in it, maybe once a month. Um, so if somebody's looking at it as a full-time truck for dirt bikes and stuff, if it's just one guy, again, there's tons of storage room, everything for what you need. With a couple guys, it does get crowded compared to a full-size truck, obviously, but it's a lot better fuel mileage and uh, more comfortable than those trucks. So again, on this for this video. There are tons of good Honda Ridgeline videos on the 17 and 19, which is the newer model. There's tons of good videos out there that go over all the details of this truck. I'm mainly gonna go over why I got it uh, and the reasons over Tacoma. Okay, so we're gonna go for a little drive. Um, I'm not, this is the first car we've had with a button and no key, which is kind of a trip. So the backup camera is really rad. We've never had a vehicle with that. Uh, we don't buy new vehicles too often. Really cool feature. One big downside is when you have the tailgate down, like it is right now with a dirt bike in there, um, no camera, it's pointing at the ground. So, but it works most of the other time. I picked up a trailer the other day and I backed up and it saw the trailer ball. I was able to back all right up to the hitch like this. It was awesome. So it was really cool. Didn't need anyone backing me up, went right to the ball. So the backup camera is really nice. Um, has some different features and angles. I've never even touched them yet. So cool deal. Um, again, another great feature about the Honda Ridgeline. So far, we're really loving this thing. Got a few thousand miles. We better turn that music down or we'll get copyright infringements here or whatever, right? Um, all the technology in this thing is incredible. That's one of the really selling points was that the um, technology thing was really good and uh, we can listen to our, you know, classic rock and all that, you know, this is the kind of stuff we listen to here at uh, Dirt Bike TV. Anyway, there's, there's a bunch of reasons that we look to this vehicle. And one of the main, we weren't even considering this vehicle. Um, my wife has always liked the look of the Tacomas and we've always been Toyota people. I still have my first truck, a brand new vehicle I bought in 1987 when I was in high school. And a uh, really cool Toyota truck. It's, you know, 300, 50,000 miles or so and we just we call it the beater loaner truck and um, I don't know if I'll ever get rid of it and it's it works great so we've always kind of been Toyota people and still are we really enjoy the Toyotas so, and so then why didn't we get the Tacoma that we were considering and there's a few reasons for it but when we went and test drove the new Tacoma one of the problems was is they small sized the engine a few, a few years ago like three or four years ago and they put a 10 speed transmission in it the thing is constantly shifting, constantly shifting. And so it was really annoying and it had a lot of feedback through the steering wheel. You could just feel it shifting all the time, up shifting, down shifting. So that was annoying. And then also it just felt kind of cobby when it still has drum brakes in the rear. Uh, and for a car you're paying, for a truck that you're paying 40, 45,000, whatever for, it shouldn't have drum brakes in the rear. I mean, that, I mean that's a little thing, but it is, so my, our biggest complaint after driving it, we drove it a couple different times, 
we drove it a couple different times and felt like the the biggest problem was that it felt like it was overpriced for what it was um, the lack of entertainment features and the lack of technology driving which i'll talk about it the, for us we felt like it should be five or eight grand less than what it is but they don't have to be because they're so popular that they can kind of charge what they want for them and the resale is tremendous on Tacomas. So you're not gonna go wrong getting a Tacoma by any means and I'm not doing this video to convince people to not buy Tacomas by any means. They're great vehicles. They look way better, I think, than this, but personally. Um, I think they look cool, but I don't think that maybe they're quite as practical for what we needed. We needed a daily driver that was gonna be used as a truck like once a month, the back of it. And so if you're, you know, if you want something that definitely looks cooler, has, probably going to have better resale long term, that Tacoma is probably it. So now the features on this thing that I really like are the adaptive cruise control, which is just, just so cool. You can actually set it right here. You, it has these settings and you can change the distance behind the vehicle. It's really smart. Um, we've never had a newer vehicle with this kind, with these kind of features. So it's really fun for us. The other thing is the lane keep assist system and it, it'll, it actually works pretty well and it's not, I thought I wouldn't like it, that it's too annoying, but the only, I've only taken it off on tight, tra uh, tight, I say trails, but tight roads. On tight roads, we'll turn it off because um, maybe it's trying to correct when you maybe want to cross the line a little bit or whatever. So those are the big features are that. And the comfort inside, the comfort level inside the vehicle is far greater for us than the Tacoma. The Tacoma, the windshield area is very small. You felt like you were like in a little tunnel, um, you know, looking out. It felt more cramped. Um, there's definitely more room inside here. The cab, my wife and I are in here, you know, going, it is definitely a, a big difference um, in the, the amount of room you have. The back seat room is incredible. I'm sure there's tons of videos that show you how all that works. The seat goes up. It's really good storage back seat. The back seat sits high. So what's nice about it for people who have to sit in the back, which isn't myself or my wife, it's other people. So little people, other people, and they get to sit a little taller than they would in any other you know, truck setup like this. So that's kind of nice. Um, they, get, they get up higher and get a good feel for um, being able to see you know, over the drivers. They're not too cramped in there. So. Again, those are the main reasons that we went this route. This thing has plenty of power, just love it. Tons of good features, programming, like the remote auto start, programming, um, auto, auto lock. If you walk away, you have the keys in your pocket, five seconds, it'll lock itself, which is nice when you forget to lock it. And um, just a lot of cool features that are really nice. Okay, so, with the RTLE version in all wheel drive, so far we've been in the snow and ice and some pretty tough you know, conditions that even would be kind of tough on our, I have an F-250 diesel, it's an older one, a four wheel drive, and even some of that I'd be sketched out. This thing did amazing with these mode controls. There's these buttons that right down here by your shifter you have mode control and it goes to uh, normal, snow, mud, sand. And you can switch on the fly. And in the snow, one worked amazing. We were up in Utah and it was icy out. And the this, this sand one we used out at Pismo, just pulled out there. For those who are familiar with California, there's a, a nice beach where you can, in the central coast, you can drive out there. And um, you can go out in the sand dunes if you want. I went up a little ways before my wife started yelling, like, don't go any further. So um, we, had, we had a good time and it worked really well in the sand for, for what it is. Um, obviously, I don't know if I'd put it, you know, heads up against a four wheel drive, uh, you know, Tacoma out in the sand by any means, but I think it's sufficient for what we needed. So these mode selector switches are really nice in this stuff. And um, it has torque vectoring, you know, that provides, it's not a real four wheel drive system being an all wheel drive and it provides that. And I'm sure there's videos that will give you all that tech stuff. Um, vehicles like this are not my full-time deal by any means, but, um, again, we're loving this thing. Um, and again, 
you're not going to go wrong getting a Tacoma. But this thing, uh, yeah, I think is more for, yeah, and I guess I am getting into this demographic of old guy. Um, great for old guys, old wife, whatever, that want to just have something to drive around that's totally comfortable. I think it's good for, you know, two people, maybe a third or a dog uh, or two in the back. Um, obviously, probably not good for a full family like a Sequoia would be or something. Uh, but it's great that you have the storage in the back. Uh, it's really nice that you have all that stuff. Pretty happy with most everything about it. Um, the tailgate doesn't lock. That was a real frustrating thing that we're going to have to add. The back doors don't open far enough, but there's a fix for that. There's these door checkers you put in. There's a video. The guy shows how to do it. Really cool. I've already, they're off a Pilot, a Honda Pilot, and it actually, the back doors will open further. So that's really, those are actually going to go on soon. So I'm going to do that, um, lock, you know, locking tailgate, a couple other little things, but I don't know that we're going to do a whole lot of other mods. There are people that lift these and have tried larger tires and stuff. That's some stuff I'm going to look at, but everything I've researched so far, if you really want to get it much higher than most of the bigger tires that guys are putting on right away are only like a half inch taller. It's really not much of anything. The front wheels are the problem area. The clearance, like if you're cranked all the way, say pulling into a gas station, that's where it's going to hit the, the body. And so there are some people that do some modifications in there, but I haven't been able to find any around me. So that's something I might look into in the future. Um, I think it would give it a little bit better stance if you can, and there are lifts for the front and the rear, but I would rather just lift just the front, maybe an inch and a half to two inches and put a little bit, little bit larger tires that maybe an inch taller, something like that. So that's kind of what, what I'm thinking as far as mods would go. But even then, not too concerned about it because stock is pretty nice just leaving it stock. It's all good and reliable and, uh, and long lasting like, like Hondas are. Um, being in the dirt bike industry, total use to Hondas uh, reliability and, and performance. So again, pretty happy with it. So uh, feel free to comment and uh, subscribe. If you have any questions, always hit me up. And uh, if, you're, if you're out uh, trail riding or, or at the track, we'll see you there.